This flying aircraft carrier worth billions of dollars is finally ready for action, transforming the U.S. Navy into the U.S. Air Force. But what would happen when these giants of the sea will fly as actual aircraft? Will it only boast the U.S. Navy's strength in front of enemies, or will it make the country truly undefeatable? Join us to explore this incredible transformation, and hold on to your seats, because the different flying carrier programs coming ahead will blow your mind. Flying aircraft carriers may sound strange at first, however, they've been around since the World Wars. Now, with technology advancing quickly, they're back in limelight with the U.S. at the forefront of this new era in airborne carriers. The renewed interest in flying carriers largely stems from the unmatched supremacy of American sea-based aircraft carriers in the present day. A whopping 25% of the world's aircraft carriers proudly represent the United States, boasting deck space that exceeds the combined total of all other nations. Moreover, the main ships of the USS Ford class of these flying carriers are even more dangerous than any other aircraft ever built, and here's why. First, powering the USS Gerald Ford are two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, the latest engines crafted for maritime use. Thanks to these reactors, the carrier only needs refueling once throughout its entire 50-year service life, tapping into the never-ending supply of nuclear energy. This means the USS Ford can stay operational for a significant time, around 25 years straight without refueling. How efficient! Moreover, with a top speed of approximately 30 knots, this supercarrier can reach any destination worldwide, whether it's to strengthen bonds with allies or respond swiftly to potential threats. Next, the USS Ford boasts state-of-the-art sensors, processors, and weaponry crucial for maintaining a balance between intelligence and combat effectiveness. Unlike most other aircraft carriers, it features a single system for both horizon and volume search. The AN SPY-3 multifunction radar for X and S band active electronically scanned array. This cutting-edge radar system, the top of American technology, handles tasks like surveillance and air traffic control, communicating with missiles, and spotting targets from far away with incredible accuracy. Last but not least, the USS Ford can house up to 75 fighter jets and unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, at any given time. Among them is the highly praised F-35C Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter. This fighter has captured the Navy's heart and has been the focus of the Pentagon's priciest weapons development program ever, costing a jaw-dropping $400 billion. Its adaptability speaks volumes. It's exceptional in close air support, vertical takeoff and landing, and everything in between, making it the Navy's top pick for modern warfare. And when the time comes for the spotlight to shift to the sixth generation FAXX fighter, the USS Ford is ready. It's equipped with all the necessary technology to house, launch, and recover this next generation fighter with ease. All these advancements and many more have joined forces to establish the U.S. as an unbeatable force on the seas. And now, the goal is to replicate this dominance in the skies. It's an ultimate aim that has sparked the creation of numerous programs. While real flying carrier concepts may not be as flashy as Marvel's Shields helicarrier, they represent the closest humanity has come in the last century. Looking back a hundred years takes us to the era of airships. As early as 1917, experiments were underway involving aircraft suspended under airships, which we'll refer to as microfighters. These aircraft primarily served to protect the airships. However, as airship technology declined, various flying carrier programs emerged, each with its unique features. Let's discuss each one of them now. 
Boeing 747 Airborne Aircraft Carrier Back in the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force played around with the idea of turning a big aircraft into a flying carrier packed with small fighter planes that could be launched and retrieved mid-air. They looked at options like the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy and the Boeing 747. Boeing took the lead by showing in their proposal that the 747 had better range and endurance when fully loaded, able to carry a massive 883,000 pounds. That meant it could potentially carry up to 10 microfighters. Boeing planned to specially design these microfighters to fit snugly inside the 747. They also had a plan for the big plane to transport the fighters over long distances drop them where needed, bring them back, and even refuel them if necessary. Big aims, right? However, there were doubts about things like how far the plane could fly in one tank of fuel and whether Boeing's microfighters could handle advanced threats. Despite these issues, the proposal never got beyond Boeing's report. Still, the report concluded that, despite the likely costs, the concept was technically doable. Nuclear-Powered Lockheed CL-1201 Lockheed, known for pushing boundaries, took on the challenge of creating a flying aircraft carrier as large as a traditional one. This aircraft, weighing a hefty 5,265 tons and towering as tall as a 14-story building, was truly groundbreaking. To get such a massive structure off the ground, the design featured an impressive 1,120-foot wingspan and a fuselage stretching 560 feet long, equivalent to two and a half Boeing 747s placed end to end. Surprisingly, the Lockheed CL-1201 could be powered by just four large turbofan engines fueled by regular jet fuel, lifting it to an altitude below 16,000 feet. Once in the air, nuclear energy from an onboard reactor took over, enabling the jet to fly continuously for an impressive 41 days without refueling or needing to land again. It could maintain a cruising speed of Mach 0.8 and fly at around 30,000 feet up during this period. Talk about power! Despite its remarkable capabilities, the aircraft would require a crew of 845 and could deploy 22 multi-role fighters with a hangar bay for repairs. However, the projected cost running into billions of dollars and the extensive labor hours needed for production and maintenance likely led to the aircraft never progressing beyond the proposal stage. However, the idea of the Lockheed CL-1201 remains a fascinating mystery from the past, still grabbing interest and sparking curiosity today. The B-36 Peacemaker The B-36 Peacemaker, a strategic bomber, was considered for an upgrade to carry microfighters. It could hold up to four of them. Back in the 1950s, the B-36 stood out for its massive size and weight. With its huge 230-foot wingspan, the B-36 outdid even the B-52 Stratofortress, making it one of the largest aircraft ever built. When fully loaded with fuel and weapons, it weighed an impressive 410,000 pounds. Despite its remarkable features, the B-36 never saw action. By the time it was ready, World War II had already ended. However, its immense size and range led the Air Force to consider using it as a flying aircraft carrier. But this idea never materialized. The introduction of mid-air refueling significantly expanded the range of various aircraft, making the B-36's range less critical. Consequently, its potential role as a flying carrier became outdated. Lockheed C-130 Hercules In a departure from past efforts, the United States has recently explored a new flying carrier program. Since 2015, the United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, has been investigating the use of a modified Lockheed C-130 Hercules cargo aircraft to deploy and support Dynetics X-61 Gremlins, unmanned aerial vehicles, as microfighters. After completing their missions, 
these microfighters are retrieved using a unique air recovery method involving a drogue-like receptacle and docking technique. Testing is currently underway at Dugway Proving Grounds with International Air Responses providing the contracted C-130A. In January of 2022, DARPA successfully launched an X-61 Gremlin UAV from the bay of the C-130 during one of these tests. If the test receives approval and the flying carrier program is officially launched, it would enable the United States to deploy drones from motherships while remaining outside of enemy air defenses. This approach would allow the drones to engage targets before returning to the airspace around the mothership to be recaptured and transported back for servicing or repairs. However, the tests have hit some bumps. While one test showed that the drone could be deployed by the C-130, unfortunately, the drone was destroyed after an hour and a half of flight due to a parachute failure. Fortunately, this issue is likely an easy fix that can be addressed in future tests. With this setback resolved, the program will proceed as planned, making way for similar initiatives. Ultimately, it will provide the United States with the capability of a supercarrier in the sky, strengthening an already impressive fleet of aircraft carriers. The idea of flying aircraft carriers opens up big possibilities for future air battles. From old tests to new ideas, there's a lot to consider. So, do you think flying aircraft carriers are the way forward for military technology? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more interesting military updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.